This is your host, Stephen Brent Sargent, bringing you a special edition of We Were On The Break series podcast. I'm actually going to go into what I believe is the current state of the crypto compliance job market. Now, I am not a full-time recruiter. This is actually something I do because I really enjoy helping people get jobs, but I am in a ton of conversations within the industry. I have a good idea of the landscape when it comes to jobs, especially here in Canada, but I'm just going to give you some of my observations. I'm also going to tag some really great recruiters around the world, and hopefully they can add in their insights as well. They may disagree in some areas. Uh, Every jurisdiction is different. Every recruiter is different, different type of roles. Some are more senior, uh, some are more operational or entry level or analytical or analyst roles. So I'm going to go dive into it because I think there's a big, huge conversation about like the great resignation and what that actually means. Does it really exist? What I think right now is happening is for the first time I feel since I've been alive, the job candidates actually have the leverage. Uh, This is a buyer's market when it comes to, especially when it comes to crypto compliance positions. And the reason for that is there's not a ton of blockchain investigation specialists, especially because compliance AML investigation in this space, for the most part, I would say over the last four or five years uh, was prevalent. A lot of the early jobs in compliance were actually people that were in more operational customer support roles. And then they evolved into more compliance AML or fraud roles just by the nature of their business of communicating with customers, dealing with thefts, dealing with scams and frauds and uh, illicit activity. Um, But now there doesn't really seem to be a wealth of blockchain investigation specialists. Another reason is, is that other than chain analysis, there's really not many courses that you can take and get practical knowledge on how to use these blockchain investigations tools to be actually job ready. And the only hiccup with chain analysis is they don't offer these uh, courses, which is their uh, chain analysis reactor course directly, you would have to go through one of their subsidiaries or partners like TCAE, or uh, I know Nick Ferno and Asset Realty, uh, I believe it's CSI Tech, sorry, they have their course offered in the UK and a couple other organizations around the world, which makes it really difficult when it comes to timing and the ability to gain this type of knowledge. So those are kind of things right off the bat. But I think right now, people, even those transitioning from the traditional AML, they have options now. When you really think about it, even if you didn't really like your job all that much, right now during the pandemic, even though at some points the kids are home, it can be stressful, uh, you're dealing with maybe sick or, or ill loved ones. But the reality is, is that you're working from home and all those little microaggressions, all the things that maybe built up in your mind and all the things that really pissed you off about your job are not as prevalent. Plus, you don't have to slug it into work and commute for a few hours. So you're still getting a couple hours back. And what you realize is you're probably getting a lot more work done around your schedule and you're not rushing back and forth, whether it's dropping kids or trying to beat traffic. So that not so great job is not even that bad and it's super manageable right now. And for a lot of professionals, especially those working in traditional banks, Uh, It was already a pretty cushy job, and now it's an extremely cushy job without the commute. So not many people are looking to take the leap into crypto compliance or blockchain investigations when they have a fairly high-paying, comfy job. That's one thing I've noticed. Uh, Also, um, I think we're just like people just have more options, and I think people did a lot of reflecting over the last two years seeing what they really had time for and didn't have time for. And a lot of people realize like they're not even in the maybe job that they want or even industry that they want. And there's a ton more opportunities now, especially in new niches like Web3 and DAOs and NFTs and DeFi. There's so many niche areas where you can maybe be more creative or maybe even get use some of your compliance chops in those areas, you're not really looking uh, to make a move unless it's a perfect opportunity for you. So these are some of the things that I think about just when I think about the whole manifesto of what could be happening in 2022. But what I also realize is there's a ton of jobs coming. 
only more institutions are going to get involved in blockchain investigations. Uh, as you can see, all the banks are going to have some kind of uh, exposure to certain products or services or e EFTs or, or different products or services that they're going to be using these products, ETFs, sorry, that they're going to be using these products. So it's only a matter of time is they're going to need blockchain and crypto specialists in those areas too. And since there's not that many people that have these experiences or expertise, it's a really good opportunity to progress your career. Or if you're just starting out in compliance or AML together, I would start directly here. I would start at Web3 and find ways to kind of create your own niche in these areas. Obviously, they're still looking for traditional experience. So it's great that if you start off at a traditional financial institution, but if you can get in uh, in an entry level position and work your way up through the AML fraud or risk management departments at some of these uh, DeFi uh, protocols like Uniswap or OpenSea NFT uh, marketplaces, it's a really great way to start your career and gain the experience that's going to be needed five, 10 years from now, uh, in my opinion. So let me break this talk down into three categories. First category is people that actually have blockchain investigations experience. I'm going to give my thoughts on those people. Second, professionals that don't have any uh, blockchain experience, but they're really enthusiastic and they're from the traditional and they have a ton or a good amount of wealth of knowledge when it comes to traditional AML and compliance, and they're looking to transition into crypto. Last but not least, I'm actually going to speak to the hiring managers, the companies out there, the employers and the recruiters out there of what I see might be maybe not missteps, but areas that they can improve on to help their attract some of the best professionals in the industry. So here we go. What professionals with blockchain investigations experience need to know? you guys got options. Like we got options. We are in short supply. Like I was joking around with my friend today, like push your chest out, strut around like a peacock, be confident because there is no shortage of opportunities for you. Now, especially with the pandemic, a lot more remote opportunities have opened up, uh, especially around the U.S. A lot of jobs are saying remote U.S. A lot of these companies are based out of the hubs in the U.S., San Francisco, New York, etc. So there's a ton of opportunities in the U.S., especially if you know the BSA regulations, uh, you filed FinCEN, SARS, etc. Uh, there's a real huge opportunity for you to transaction transition into this area, especially if you're like ex-law enforcement, ex-regulator, uh, those usually carry higher transition points into like senior manager position. So you got options. That's the first thing you need to know. What I would be wary of and what I've seen is be wary of those high paying shit show jobs. And we all know what I'm talking about. There are a lot of companies flashing around a lot of money to get top compliance professionals. And we just know that their compliance program isn't as robust or they don't have a focus on compliance. And they're really just paying to put people in the seats. Uh, and I would be concerned about those companies, especially uh, many of them are operating in major markets without a so solid compliance program. Um, or the ones that are too busy to like create a job description or just kind of throwing out a couple point form. Like, do you have chain analysis? Uh, do you know Jumio? Like, we need you. Like, those ones I'd be cautious. If they don't have time to do a job description, they're probably not going to have time to build a, a very robust uh, and very robust compliance or AML program. I think that's at the end of the day. So you know what you're getting into by accepting uh, the, the bags of cash at either hand. Uh, so be wary of that just because... I don't know, there, there could be that kind of scarlet letter on your resume for some of these organizations, maybe not, uh, but uh, just something to be wary of when people are coming, dropping bags of cash at your door. And the best thing might be to do is to find a company that you actually enjoy because there's so many companies that you're looking at, at if you really want to work at a Coinbase or if you like that MoonPay is getting involved with celebrities and you know board ape yacht club or other nft projects um that's probably something that's more exciting even if the pay isn't as high those institutions might be more exciting than joining those on the cutting edge uh, of what's happening in web3 so find a place that you actually like working at enjoy the people I'm always attracted to go to places where I can be mentored uh, by some of the top professionals 
or somewhere that has an, an immense amount of exposure. So smaller teams where you're going to be doing a little bit of everything, interacting with several different business units where your opinion or strategy is actually taken a little bit more serious. Those are also interesting plays. Some of the other bigger organizations, uh, including like the Coinbase and Kraken, has a ton of compliance professionals, which is great because they, they employ a lot of great people. But you might get lost amongst the numbers and that might be okay with you, especially if you're transitioning from a financial institution, you're probably used to that. Uh, but for those really looking to make a mark, I think you have a better opportunity uh, doing so in some smaller organizations or ones with newer AML programs. And I posted a couple really great jobs today for those of you in the US, I wanna check that out. Um, I would work with a recruiter and I know that's super biased because I'm a recruiter. Um, but even when I wasn't a recruiter, I was always like, connecting with other recruiters in the space, uh, you know, picking their brain, like just advising them on what I'm seeing from a candidate side, because that actually helps recruiters, right? If they know what's going on in other interview processes, that actually gives them a lot more leverage, a lot more information, a lot maybe more empathy for some of the other candidates that they're dealing with. So if you can help and provide from valuable information to recruiters, they may be also able to help you with the search. But the reality is, is they know usually the inner workings of these companies. They know how well their compliance programs or how much focus or intent they have on building uh, robust compliance programs. So it's always best to get that insight. I know a lot of people are thinking, yeah, but they're going to take a cut and I'll get paid less because they're taking a cut. However, at this stage, many of the biggest organizations are working with recruiters because they're looking for top talent. And I don't think that cut is going to affect you. Any commission that goes to recruiter, I think really isn't coming out of your pocket. And to get that extra bit of knowledge, because they usually know how the process is, to get that extra bit of knowledge is probably worth, uh, probably worth connecting with recruiters and working with recruiters. I'm a big fan of looking for like, emerging blockchain companies. There's a ton of great professionals that post about uh, unicorns or companies that just raised a ton of funds. Usually if you've raised a ton of money uh, through some kind of seed round, you're probably going to have to invest a good amount of those funds, that capital into compliance because you want to protect the investment uh, for your investors. And a lot of those investors are tied with large financial institutions. So they understand the importance of banking relationships. So these emerging companies, although they might not have a ton of roles, what I try to do is look for somebody that's high, handling like the regulatory affairs or policies and procedures, someone really high up, because that means they probably don't have any operational people like investigators or senior compliance compliance managers. So there's an option for those positions to come up in the future. So if you can get in there interacting with people within those organizations, I think of companies like MoonPay, the Dharma one I posted earlier today was super interesting uh, because, you know, they may be acquired by OpenSea, places like Uniswap and OpenSea, like although a lot of these are decentralized projects, eventually we're going to see some kind of compliance measures put in place. And it's always great to start a conversation about compliance before the companies need it, because then they know exactly who to come to uh, when those opportunities do come up. And it's a great way to learn about their business because you're speaking compliance. They're giving you some information. You can provide some insights based on what you know. Look out for those emerging companies, especially those that are raising money. Those to me are golden plays. Plus, you might be able to get in early enough to get a decent amount of equity. And as these companies grow, so do you with them. So that's a, that would be my biggest suggestion to those that already have blockchain investigation experience. Uh, maybe take uh, some of your talents down to South Beach, right? And go build a super team there uh, with some other blockchain investigators. Uh, one thing I see from a lot of people, not both traditional, but actually a lot of people that have blockchain experience is that there's not a lot of confidence from these people. I think there's a lack of confidence because they understand their role so well because they, what they're doing now doesn't seem as complex because they have a good grasp of how to use blockchain analytics tools like chain analysis or elliptic or TRM labs. Uh, they may not feel like they're like in high, the, in the high demand that they are. So just because you're doing things and it doesn't feel like you're doing a ton of complicated things, your skill set is still in high demand. Get that confidence, reach out to companies, see what they're up to, see how you can offer your skills. Um, 
to me, like one, it's like dog years, right? Like one year working in crypto is like seven years working in traditional financial institutions. Maybe not an exact calculation, but you can use that advantage. So when you see somebody with six months experience in crypto, that's not like, oh, only six months. That's like, wow, six months. Like where did they work? What did they do? What do they know? What can they bring to the table? Because that you know in that six months that you probably worked, uh, <laughs> you worked like a dog probably in that last six months. So um also, too, look into opportunities to provide consulting. There's a ton of really great companies that are doing consulting in this area. So even if you can maybe become one of the consultants on their roster, or better yet, offer some of these maybe new NFT projects that are just getting their feet wet into compliance, some consulting, advisory service, either at a low cost, either free, or even better yet, if you can get some equity or small amounts of tokens in exchange for your services, it's a great way for you to help out these companies, use them as a use case. So when you're looking for maybe full-time employment, or even maybe starting up your own consultancy, you can kind of leverage these use cases because you have a good understanding uh, of how those programs that you probably help build work. Uh, so remember, last thing is you got all the chips, right? Like you are interviewing these companies just as much as they're interviewing you so there's no reason to go in feeling desperate or nervous the one thing i've realized is that even if you lost your job for whatever reason or you just don't like a company and you leave there's going to be tons of opportunities even if you don't see them right now there's always new players coming into the space and one of the things that they're going to have to check the box off first is definitely going to be compliance in order for them to be active and engaging with customers around the world and I think we have to remember that like we got all the chips, you decide whether or not you want to go all in or not. Don't let them control the hand. Um, but as I said, this is a two way street. Obviously, a lot of these companies are great companies and you want to work with them. So you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. So really, there shouldn't be any nerves. It should be just an open conversation that you're having. Let's get into people that professionals that don't have any blockchain investigations experience or you know they don't have any advanced like practical experience like they haven't traded or used crypto all that much and i think this is the majority of my crowd that are looking to get into crypto so these are some of my thoughts on this right now reminds me of about four years ago when i first started you know there was no courses really there was no certifications right now is the real barrier to entry is enthusiasm and ambition and that's a really great spot to be in you could probably transition to the majority of positions just because you're enthusiastic just because you're maybe in the discords or on linkedin or on crypto twitter engaging with people connecting with people and just because you're seeing the jobs that nobody else is seeing everyone's looking on linkedin and indeed for positions but a lot of these companies don't even post there they post on regular websites or things like cryptojobslist.com that i showed you guys earlier today so um just being a little bit more resourceful and ambitious will probably find you more opportunities and get into jobs and speak to people that enter into this space there's a lot of traditional folks that have been in blockchain over the last three years or have even just got in over the last three months talk to them because a lot of them are fairly witty they're, they're super intelligent and they were super super strategic on how they entered in the space so talk to them ask them questions about how they got in and things that you can work on and things that they had to deal with because they're going to be the best people that can help you outside of recruiters i think uh and that would be my next line was like network with your blockchain buddies uh it's always a good idea not even so much as like they can tell you how they got in they're probably still being approached because of the market we're in they're probably still being approached with jobs as we speak so even if they don't want them they may know of opportunities that maybe not even on the market or just being word of mouth through kind of the crypto compliance community so those are really great opportunities for you to kind of show them that you're interested in getting in and one thing i have to say is like if you're interested, like be interested, like actually work towards a lot of people when they lose their job or they're not happy with their traditional job. The first thing they say is, uh, you know, crypto is the future. I want to get into crypto, but they never take any active steps to, to do so. They never want to go to any interviews. They never want to uh, take any certifications. They just kind of talk about it passively. And, you know, when you talk about it enough, like it's like the boy that cried with wolf enough, you do it enough times and then people don't really want to take you seriously. And then when those crypto jobs come up, 
people don't want to refer you. And this has happened to me a lot of times where I don't even want to refer people because I don't even think A, they're serious uh, or B, that they're, they're, they're looking, that they're interested in crypto and, and not just another job. And as a recruiter, and even as a person that's just helping people get into to the, to the space, you want to feel like the person you're helping is really ambitious and really want to get in the space, not just because they had a fight one time where their boss said their work wasn't that great. And now they're looking just to go anywhere to find a new job. So I think that's the biggest advice I can give you is like, stop being interested. Like when people say I'm interested, like nobody cares that you think crypto is the future. Either you want to transition into this and take the active steps to do so, or you don't like stop, stop talking about it and be about it. Um, and if you are going to be about it, grab some quick certifications. Like I'm very strategic in this. Like, yes, uh, Chainalysis has a CC, uh, CCFC and the CRC. And these are really great industry ready courses but if you have a potential interview next week there's a ton of courses that you can take manchester cf has a crypto assets course with elliptic um there's a one hour udemy course uh, i think it was stephen yang that did it with and chain there's a ton there's books that you can read I, I did this i left a post for you guys a, a few weeks ago about everything that you can do for less than 250 dollars. and the beauty of those things is that you can put all of those on your resume within a week uh just by going through them and actively doing it take if you really want to get in this industry take a week vacation and call it crypto week and dive in all these certifications you would almost be job ready by the time you had an interview and you would definitely know how investigations are conducted on the blockchain so when you're going into the interview you're not like uh you know there's these companies that trace bitcoin uh, i for chain uh, i can't remember the name like that's how people sound when they're talking and when you hear that you're just like oh okay this person is really not that serious because it takes very little effort. And a lot of the resources I gave were absolutely free resources. So it takes very little resources, effort to get educated enough to have a competent interview conversation, or at least apply for these roles with the competency to know exactly what you would be doing, or at least explain what you could be doing using your traditional skills in this role. So that's the one thing is get grab some quick certs, toss them up on your resume so it looks fresh it looks clean it looks like you're actually interested because a lot of people that say they're interested are you know similar to traditional like they think that oh i don't want to take my a cams because my employer will pay for it yeah but if you're not going to get employed because you don't have that kind of foundational certification uh it's kind of hard so do everything upfront. The value is in the upfront and that's where people will see the most value the people that take all the courses early they see the reward in the pay later on, because they're the ones that are getting the early jobs. They're getting the better jobs. Uh, they're more enthusiastic and they tend to do better uh, in the long run in crypto or even in traditional AML. Apply even if you don't have certs, like even if you have nothing, uh, apply with understanding what strong traditional skills uh, because those are still in high demand. So if you can explain how you can, you know, write a quality SAR or narrative or report for certain financial intelligence units, and you're just kind of cop you're just kind of like inputting crypto into the conversation, uh, you can still probably land some of these jobs because at the moment, it's really hard to find anyone with, with active blockchain experience. I feel right now, it's the people that have certs and people that really don't even have any certs, but they're really strong AML professionals and they're strong enough that they could transition to any industry, whether it's crypto or payments or credit cards uh, and do AML uh, or compliance. So that's something, <laughs> apply with confidence, even if you don't have certs. You've heard me say confidence a lot in this conversation. Confidence is so key. Stop worrying that you have no experience. You should be able to learn how to conduct a blockchain investigation based on just the tools I gave you in that post and just in the conversation that we're having today. So just explain what you can do in that position. I did another video on my YouTube, go check it out, where I show you like how you can show um, a future company, how you would conduct an investigation using free tools, using access to paid tools. There's a tons of way, be creative. I think the lack of confidence comes from the fact that a lot of people aren't that creative and you're, 
you know, you're interviewing people in crypto who are a little bit more laid back, a little bit more creative, a little bit more technical. You have to show them, even if you don't know the answers or have the skills, you know how to acquire them. Uh, and that's hugely important. You have to be resourceful in this industry. If you don't even take the time to get basic certificates or, you know, just go on a YouTube rabbit hole run of Bitcoin and blockchain investigations. Uh, it's hard for those organizations to want to hire you. Let's see what else we have here. All, one thing I will gauge, although it's not impossible, not everyone's going to be able to transition transition from their traditional role at the same pay, same seniority over the crypto. It's kind of back to my point of if you stop being interested and actually go to work and be that person. Uh, obviously, everyone would love to not take a pay, you know, a pay cut because they live this lifestyle. And, and that's great. But what you have to do is like think long term. Yes, maybe a ten, fifteen thousand dollar possibly pay cut now, but with that one year experience, that turns into a thirty thousand dollar premium that you would be getting paid above your current traditional role. Uh, and you have to be confident knowing that you can do that. So taking a little pay cut now might seem like a bad move and you may have the ego where you've done a certain amount of work but the reality is a lot of your work that you've done at traditional doesn't even equate to anything outside your organization most of your values held within your own organization because you've either worked really hard for them or you have a lot of seniority there but a lot of you can't even transition in from your traditional role into another same paying or higher paying traditional role let's just be quite honest here so um it would be wise, I think, to at least consider some roles, especially if there's smaller organizations where you can work your way up or establish, establish yourself as a lead within the investigations team or as a, a senior person within the investigations team. Go and improve yourself for six months, get the work done, and you'd be surprised how the compensation will follow you, especially if you get a little bit of equity in the deal, which you're not going to get from most traditional jobs. You're not going to even get the opportunity for stock options or legitimate equity, I feel, uh, within those own institutions. So my thought process is start early in some place if you like the team and think of the exposure that you can get with different or different business units, uh, even just different compliance functions and build from there, build with a team as they rise. And hey, maybe take a little bit of a cut and get paid in crypto and live beneath your means uh, or stack equity, right? Like I think one thing I should have done more of is get paid more in crypto, uh, not so much uh, having high living expenses because my monthly burn is pretty high with two kids. But uh, if you you know have the opportunity and you can uh, get paid in crypto or tokens, uh, a lot of that is going to produce long term results. And I think what you have to realize is that although you know Bitcoin celebrated, I think it's 11, 11, 10, 11, 11th birthday. I'm terrible at math. 11th birthday uh, yesterday, the day before. Uh, we're new, like we're still so early. We haven't even touched the surface and you still have the opportunity to make those long-term gains by getting it right now to me is like, you're getting in early. Um, and last but not least, what should companies know? And this is more so blockchain crypto companies. I'm going to be quick on this. Um, but what I think is it's a candidate market. Uh, and I think a lot of old paradigms we have around compensation and work experience really don't mean anything if you can't find anyone to fill your roles. I, I think of it like the, the housing market in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where I live, or even like any big city, New York, LA. Uh, it doesn't matter if you believe that the value of that house isn't that much or you don't want to go into a bidding war and pay over that somebody else is willing to and you'll just the end result is you'll just lose that house so i think in the market that we're in right now if you're not willing to pay a little bit more of a premium the end result is that you lose these candidates and you just have no one really great replacing the role so you have to take your chances yes you might be overpaying for what you're getting but then the supply demand issue we're having right now that's just the reality of it and you might have to be a little bit more flexible my biggest key is spend more time and resources investing in your current employees and i know that sounds very basic and obvious 
but they're your best recruiters. Think about it. Many professionals that I talk to, they think about crypto, but they're not going to be jumping in and applying for every job that they see on LinkedIn or Indeed. However, if they speak to you and they say, Stephen, how is that place? Like, what's it like working here? What's the compensation like? Are you happy? Like, those are conversations that make them want to come and work with your organization. But if you're just looking for the next person, next person, next person, and you have these signs, we are hiring, we are hiring all over your banner on LinkedIn, and you're spending absolutely zero time speaking to your employees, conversing with them on how they can grow or how you can improve things like, and I think of anything, like, are you giving them opportunities to lead or conferences, attend events, uh, or even lead internal team meetings? Are you doing things by allowing them or giving them time to join working groups, whether that's international law enforcement like Interpol, Europol, or even uh, some great uh, organizations like ATII that's combating human trafficking using crypto? Uh, are you giving them opportunities to be a trainer or a speaker or even thought leadership around writing articles? Are you giving them more compensation, understanding you're at a serious risk now of losing employees because the market has went up and that employee that you might be paying 100000 is probably getting offers right now for 120, 130 from around the world where they can work remotely. So are you increasing their pay to keep the core employees that you have? And we've seen this a lot on LinkedIn in the last six months. A lot of really great professionals working with a lot of really great uh, blockchain analytics companies and regular blockchain companies are moving to other opportunities. And I, I think had those companies spent a little bit more time on these points and taking care, especially now, like just a simple call to see how your employees are doing through the pandemic and working from home and kids goes a long way. And I just don't think companies are focusing on that as much as they should. I could be wrong. This is definitely left up uh, to, for debate. But if you are looking at hiring somebody, if you are a recruiter for the organization, figuring out why people left, figuring out what you could have done better to improve their experience within the organization now, instead of just looking for the next best person, because we all know how much time, energy, and expense it trains to train up people. Uh, you really want to keep those core people on your team. So those are just some thoughts. Pay a premium as well if it's a great fit and the person has a positive mindset. It's one thing that the person can file a SAR or uh, uh, trace an, an OFAC connected address, but you need them to identify maybe typologies and trends. You need them to create maybe reports to help out your industry as well as law enforcement. You need them to make industry connections with other peers. There's tons of things that a really positive minded professional does that the average worker doesn't. So if you find a person like that, you definitely want to pay a premium because they don't come along all the time and they have options to work with several other organizations. So you really want to keep people like that within your organization because they can help build out your team. Another great thing I've seen is hire somebody that's really good at training. I've seen this with some international, uh, uh, international crypto exchanges where they're hiring people with little to no experience, little to no experience, maybe a couple certifications, but they have some of the best trainers on their staff that are able to train these people, whip them into shape within a short period of time. So that really opens up your candidate pool if you can hire some of the best people just because you have some of the best trainers on your staff and they can handle complex situations and investigations, but they can also spend an enormous amount of time training up your professionals. So that's definitely something to think about. And don't sleep. Uh, what I saw as a recruiter is that many companies, and we've seen it now on LinkedIn, many companies did not take a break during the holidays. And hey, I'm all for the mental health, take Christmas holidays off. But in dire times calls for dire situations, like you can't be sleeping while other companies are scooping up professionals and giving them offers on December 23rd and on December 27th uh, while you're taking that week off. Like somebody's got to put the process in place that if you are actively looking to hire around that time, that you are making sure to contact these potential candidates because the, by the time you get back to them in January, they've already onboarded with some other organization that was a little bit more aggressive and wanted a little bit 
bit more than you did. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. And to be quite honest, this is my last point. And this is not just for blockchain companies. I think, I personally think that we need to stop with the three, four, five touch point interview process. Like this is re- like, either you have a gut feeling about who you're hiring. I don't think you need four or five interviews to decide if this person is right for your team. And I think if you need that, you're spending a whole bunch of time where it'd be, and I understand it's expensive to onboard people and take them through and they're getting access to your database, to your customers, and there's privacy thing, issues in place and uh, protections in place for your organization. But I just don't think by the third or fourth interview, you're picking up anything else that you haven't picked up before. And if they've been interviewed by 90% of your workforce or employee base, I think that's a little overboard. And to be quite honest, I don't think you're going to, I don't think a lot of professionals are going to make it through that process. If they're comparing that process, which could take anywhere from three to five weeks usually, and another organization that's really to swoop them in within a short period of time uh, with a similar or higher compensation. So, Hey, if that's your process, I get it. Um, But I would ditch it to be quite honest, (laughs) especially if you're looking at investigations role or something that there is not a huge candidate pool, you might have to, or if you're going to do that, like, sync it up. Like it's got to be ready to go. It's got to be like, you're meeting somebody Monday, maybe again, Wednesday. And by Friday, you have like a good feel of whether or not this person's uh, ready to go. But if you don't have that built in internally, that process built in with the right decision makers available to take those interviews. And you're looking at three to four weeks, I think you're going to lose even the best talent that once you find out that the best talent, they've already gone somewhere else. And that's just what I think. I would love to hear from you guys. I appreciate, first of all, the love that you guys have shown me on LinkedIn. I want to take a few minutes out to just talk to those loyal supporters. I got all the way to the end of this podcast or video uh, because you guys have been lighting me up on LinkedIn. And for the Terrans and my boy Russ, the comments on YouTube are huge. They fill my soul. I love that people are engaging there. I have 27 subscribers on YouTube. That is huge. The fact that 27 people would actually want to hear what I'm saying. And these are like, people are watching the whole videos, which is awesome. uh, Because I can't even get one person to listen to me in my own house. So the fact that people around the world are, I think 27 is huge. I'm going to grow this as much as I can, try to provide as much value what I really want to do is give you guys the real, real stuff. Cause there's, these are the real conversations. I don't think too many people are going to tell you. Um, that's just what I think. And maybe they are telling you behind closed doors, but I don't think anyone's out saying it out loud. Let's have these conversations. Uh, let's start these debates. Cause I'm sure I'm maybe wrong on these points or outside of Canada, a lot of this doesn't even apply. And I'm going to tag some of the best recruiters I know in the industry. And I think all of them are very opinionated and have strong points. So uh, I'm looking forward to a great discussion on LinkedIn on some of these points. And I, I hope this helps whether you're a hiring manager, whether you're a recruiter, uh, whether you're, you know, just looking to get into the space or already in the space. And you're like, Hey, like mm, I'm doing really well. I have a really good job, but like companies are coming at me like with 30, 40,000 more dollars a year. That's a significant pay raise. I hope I touched on some points that resonate with you. Uh, and let's do this again soon.